Hi, I'm Lisa. One of the best ways for you to reach the final level of English fluency is to listen to native speakers and to practice speaking like they speak. In this video, you will listen to a native speaker teaching you the meaning of some very common English expressions that native speakers use all the time. Also, I will teach you the vocabulary and the expressions that he was using when he was explaining the meaning of those expressions. Many of you have told me in the comments how much you love learning from Drake when he's in my videos. Well, he's back for another video. And if you haven't watched Drake before, I think you will find his explanations clear and interesting. For this video, Drake and I met at Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles. If you ever come to Los Angeles, make sure you visit Santa Monica Pier. It's a really fun place. I used to teach English at Santa Monica College, which is nearby. It has international students from all over the world. My international students who came to Los Angeles were usually pretty advanced in grammar because they had studied English in their countries for many years, but they were not comfortable speaking English and often they didn't understand native speakers. Native speakers use a lot of expressions and that's why I create videos like this one to teach you those expressions. Let's watch my conversation with Drake now. All of the expressions he will teach you contain the word mind. So we're gonna learn some new expressions with the word mind. All right, let's do it. Okay, the first one is mind games. What does that mean? Mind games. That means that someone is playing with your mind. They're manipulating your mind somehow. Um, a good example of that might be uh, between a girlfriend and a boyfriend. If she says, if you can't be the man that I want, then I'll find someone else. That might be a mind game, you know, making him think that she'll leave if he's not doing the correct things. But maybe it's not really true, right? She's right. It's not true. It's, it's like a bluff. It's a mind game. A mind game is a psychological trick that people use in order to manipulate or intimidate someone. You manipulate the truth in order to confuse someone. Drake used the word bluff. Do you know what that means? Let's listen. It's not true, it's, it's like a bluff, it's a mind game. Drake said, it's like a bluff. You can use it as a noun, a bluff, or you can use it as a verb, he was bluffing. To bluff is to pretend that your position is stronger than it really is. It's a deception by a false show of confidence. Making someone think that you're going to do something when you really have no intention of doing it. Here's how you can use it as a noun. When he said that he was going to hurt you, he wasn't serious. It was just a bluff. I don't believe he will actually do it. He's just bluffing. And you can say, to bluff one's way into something. You can say, I can't believe they hired him. He doesn't have any experience. How did he manage to bluff his way into that great job? How about in the back of my mind? In the back of my mind. It's something you're thinking about, but you're not necessarily consciously thinking about it. It might be a subconscious thought that you have. It's something that while you're living your day-to-day -day life, maybe at work or talking to people, it's something that is on your mind. You're thinking about it, but it's not the number one thing that you're thinking about. Okay. What are some things that are in the back of your mind sometimes? Um, sometimes the things that might be in the back of my mind is um, my health or something like, you know, my finances. If finances are low, you can live your day-to-day -day life, but in the back of your mind, you know that you need to pay some bills. Let's listen to the way Drake used the word finances. He said, if finances are low. Or something like, you know, my finances. If finances are low, you can live your day-to-day -day life, but in the back of your mind, you know that you need to pay some bills. Finances are financial matters. The amount of money you have or how you're managing your money. If we say my finances, it means my money, my current financial situation. And when he said, if finances are low, that means if there isn't enough money to pay my bills, to pay for all of my needs. You can say, his finances are low this month. Or, who controls the finances in their marriage? How about if you say, great minds think alike? If someone tells you that, 
they're complimenting you, but they're also saying that they have a great mind. They're making a joke saying that they're smart and you're also smart for having that idea. Can you give me an example of that? Okay, yeah, so if I'm walking with my friend and uh, it's a hot day out like it is today and we see an ice cream place, then uh, my friend says, hey, I could really use a strawberry ice cream cone. And I might say, great minds think alike if I'm in the mood for ice cream also. Let's listen to the expression, I could use. In this case, to use doesn't really mean to use. It's an expression that has another meaning. Then uh, my friend says, hey, I could really use a strawberry ice cream cone. Drake said, I could really use an ice cream cone. I could really use means it would help me, it would benefit me, or I would like that right now. Drake said, I could really use a strawberry ice cream cone. You can also say, I'm so tired, I could use a nap right now. Or, I could use some money. Or, I could use some help. How about, you read my mind? You read my mind is something that people say when it feels like the person that they were with um, knew what they were thinking. They agreed on something. You could almost use that same expression uh, as great minds think alike, that same type of thing where we're both looking for an ice cream cone and I say, you read my mind. I also wanted an ice cream cone. You read my mind means I was thinking that too. I was just going to say the same thing. You read my mind. To put your mind to it. To put your mind to it is really giving something all of your effort. You're, you're putting all of your focus onto it. You got it done. Uh, it might have been hard, but you put your mind to it. What is something that you put your mind to in the past? Um, uh, getting through school was definitely something that you have to put your mind to. You're yeah. not always in the mood to do something, but you have to put your mind to it and get it done. Right. Working out is something you have to put your mind to sometimes. You know, you're, you're doing push-ups and sit-ups and your body wants to give up, but your mind has to tell it no. We have to keep going if we want to look good this summer. Let's listen to how some other people used to put your mind to it. You put your mind to it, anything's possible. Put your mind to it and you can do it. You can do this. You just have to concentrate and stick to it. You can be whatever you want to be if you put your mind to it. Becoming fluent in English is difficult, but you can do it if you put your mind to it. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind is a way to say, we're going to sweep this under the rug. Um, it's, it's a way to say that if the problem isn't right there in your face, if you're not seeing the problem in the moment, that we don't have to worry about it. You know, out of sight, out of mind. Okay, and what does sweep something under the rug mean? Sweep something under the rug is a way to say, there might be a problem, but we're going to act like we don't see it. We're going to just cover it up for now, give it a quick fix. Um, sweeping something under the rug might be like, uh, hey man, I know I made this mistake, but we can go ahead and sweep it under the rug, right? We don't have to talk about that. To sweep something under the rug means to hide or ignore a problem or difficulty in the hope that it will be forgotten. You can say, you must deal with your problems. Don't try to sweep them under the rug. Drake used the expression, a quick fix. He said, give it a quick fix. Let's listen. We're going to just cover it up for now, give it a quick fix. A quick fix is a fast and easy solution to a problem, but usually it's not a good solution. It's a temporary solution, and the fix will not last long. Many people look for a quick fix for losing weight. I don't believe there's a quick fix for fixing the current economy. Mind your manners. Mind your manners. Oftentimes that comes from like maybe your mom or your aunt or, or maybe a teacher or something like that. They're telling you to be polite. Mind your okay. manners is a way to say be polite. Mind your manners. Be polite. Behave or speak properly. Act appropriately. Their parents always taught them to mind their manners. Make sure you mind your manners at the birthday party. You're out of your mind or he's out of his mind. It's another way to call someone crazy. If someone says you're out of your mind, they're calling you crazy. They're saying that you're not in your right mindset. That guy is out of his mind. Let's listen to how some other people used out of one's mind. He is out of his mind. You're out of your mind. Yes, I am out of my mind. To take your mind off something. To take your mind off something is to distract yourself. Um, maybe it's a problem 
that you have in your life, you want to distract yourself with something else. You're going to take your mind off of it by getting a massage. What do you like to do to take your mind off your problems? I like to paint, as some people probably know if you've been following my Instagram. Yeah. I like to box, you know, a lot of people use exercise to take their mind off of things. Yeah. Uh, blowing off steam is another expression that people use. Oh yeah. You know, and that's more like probably uh, for working out, you know, you're doing something physical, you're blowing off steam. You're somehow getting rid of the anger in your body by doing something else. To give someone a piece of your mind. To give someone a piece of your mind is really letting them have it. It's usually a negative connotation. You're usually upset. You're giving them a piece of your mind. You're telling them uh, something about themselves or maybe a problem that you experience that has to do with them somehow and you're letting them know that you have a problem with it. So you're angry? You're angry. If uh, you go to a restaurant and you know you have bad experience and you go into the bathroom at the restaurant and it's dirty, there's paper towel everywhere and a mess everywhere, you might be fed up with it. You go to the manager and you give him a piece of your mind. You say, hey, the food was good, but there were so many other problems. You gave him a piece of your mind. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression to let someone have it. He said, really letting them have it. To give someone a piece of your mind is really letting them have it. That's a very common expression. It has the same meaning as to give someone a piece of your mind. You can say, my car is still not fixed. I'm going to give the mechanic a piece of my mind. Or you can say, I'm going to let him have it. I'm going to tell him exactly how I feel and I'm not very happy about it. I was so angry that I called him back and I gave him a piece of my mind. Wow, you were so angry. You really let her have it. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. It shocked me. It surprised me. Um, it might have even offended me. Okay, um, so it could be good or bad. It could be good or bad. It's just something that's shocking. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. When you hear the whole story, it will blow your mind. You can also say it was mind-blowing. It was a mind-blowing experience. Let's listen to how some other people used it blew my mind. It gave me funding to go study abroad and it blew my mind. I read this book and it blew my mind. And it blew my mind and it opened my heart and it made me cry. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. I must have forgotten it. Uh, it might be like a harmless thing, you know, it's not a real big deal. Uh, it can be, but it's kind of a lighthearted saying to say that you forgot something. Drake, you told me you were going to call me at 7 o'clock last night, but you didn't call me. Oh, I'm so sorry. It must have slipped my mind. You can say, I'm sorry. It must have slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. I forgot. To have peace of mind. To have peace of mind, you're at rest with the situation. Um, you aren't stressing a situation. You are calm with it. Um, you're content with it. Peace okay. of mind, you're relaxed. You're assured. Assured is a good word to use, I okay. think, for that. Can you think of an example? Yeah. Um, my grandma was always a little worried that I would never learn how to eat without making a mess. And uh, she was worried I was going to go out into the world and embarrass myself. But one day she noticed I was eating clean and proper and wiping my mouth. It gave her peace of mind to know that I was going to be a, a functional adult one day. Okay. A state of mind. A state of mind. It's your mindset. It's the way that you view things. Um, it's based on the experiences that you've gone through. A lot of times people that do great things in the world, they have a solid state of mind. They are go-getters. They're achievers. They have a state of mind that there's no excuses and they're going to go get it done regardless of any obstacles. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression go-getter. He said, they are go-getters. They are go-getters. They're achievers. They have a state of mind that there's no excuses and they're going to go get it done regardless of any obstacles. A go-getter is a person who works hard and who wants very much to succeed. An energetic and ambitious person. He's a real go-getter. If you want to start your own business, you need to be a go-getter. To take a load off your mind. To take a load off your mind. Um, something just relieved you. Um, it really took a load off my mind uh, when you said I didn't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. You know, I had a big job to do and then it got done and it took a load off of my mind. I had a lot of pressure on my mind and now it's relieved. That's fantastic. 
If you enjoyed watching Drake, I created a playlist on this channel with just my videos with Drake. He's really good at teaching English expressions. There will be more videos with Drake coming soon. And here's Drake's Instagram. You can also follow him there. Your homework is to watch this video again. Make a list of the expressions you learned and then make your own sentences and make sure that you say the sentences aloud. That way you're much more likely to memorize them. Remember, the goal is to have active knowledge, not just passive knowledge. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.